My husband Paul and I met overseas in Tirana, Albania in 1995 where I was a Peace Corps volunteer. A few years before, he had been a volunteer in Pakistan. Um, then he realized it would be more fun living overseas in third world countries if he actually got paid for it. So he got hired as a Peace Corps medical officer and left Cass Lake to meet his fate in Eastern Europe, as I like to say. To make a long story short, we fell in love, got married, and had our first child by 1997. After being evacuated from Albania, Peace Corps sent us to Eritrea in East Africa for a year, and then Papua New Guinea for two years. And both were beautiful countries, but we were burned out and read, roughing it, ready to come home. And just when we thought we were done living overseas, they offered us a post in Mongolia. So how could we refuse? We had visions of wide open steps with horses and yaks and rugged people and uh, adventure in this landlocked country just north of, of Russia. But what we should have been, uh, south of Russia, sorry. But what we should have been thinking about is the fact that we were moving from a tropical country in the South Pacific to the coldest capital city in the world. <laughs> Ulaanbaatar is now also one of the most polluted cities in the world, which is one of the reasons we left. But for many years, the city was safe and the skies were blue every single day. We had originally intended to stay for two years, but ended up staying for 11. So to say that this country is a huge part of our family and who we are is an understatement. Along with the 4th of July each year, we celebrated Nadam, which is an exciting summer festival filled with horse races, wrestling matches, and archery. And a little trick that I taught my children when they were younger in homeschooling was to put a finger on Mongolia on the globe, turn it until you got to North America, and there would be Minnesota right at the same latitude. But until a year ago, the idea of Minnesota as home was really something foreign to them, whereas riding a camel was cool, but nothing out of the ordinary. Mongolia is home to Genghis Khan, the great Mongol warrior who, along with his descendants, conquered much of Europe and Asia, and whose DNA is thought to be in 16 million people around the world. This is the current day president of Mongolia, whose daughter I taught at the International School of Ulaanbaatar. As you can see, this is a beautiful new school, but it's available only to the wealthiest citizens of the country. Traditionally, Mongolia is a nomadic herding society, but people are moving to the cities in droves, um, and the distribution of wealth uh, is, there's a huge disparity, and it's really increasing. The poverty there can be astounding and demoralizing, but as with humans everywhere, Mongolians survive. This is a traditional home called a ger, and a family can take it down, pack it all on camels, and move it to another location in a day, where they'll set it up again and be ready at nightfall. We spent many a night in one of those gears. As vegetarians, the traditional foods of Mongolia were not easy for us to stomach. Mutton dumplings full of fat and fried meat pies were the favorites. Dairy products from every animal, animal imaginable made up a huge part of the diet. I tasted fermented mare's milk, and I have to say it's an acquired taste. <laughs> A unique combination of shamanism and Buddhism is practiced in Mongolia, though these religions were almost entirely wiped out during the Soviet rule in the early 20th century. This is a celebration of the first sunrise of the new year for which we caught a train out to the countryside at 3 a.m. Tourists flock to the unique monasteries and to many other sites throughout the country during the short, hot summer. Our family enjoyed horseback riding, canoeing, hiking, attending eagle festivals, music concerts and art shows and so much more, but one of our favorite things was seeing dinosaur bones in the Gobi Desert. Mongolia is known for being one of the best locations in the world for finding dinosaur bones. And you can just drive right out to the middle of the Gobi Desert and touch these fossilized bones and eggs and petrified logs of wood. This is my daughter standing next to a skeleton in the sand, not your typical museum trip. <laughs> Our favorite vacation, though, was to Lake Hofskol in the north. To get there, we had to fly to the closest city and then drive for five hours in a Russian van, very bouncy, no roads. But it was one of the most beautiful sights I've ever been to in my life, so it was definitely worth it. Lake Hofskol is the deepest lake in Asia. The reindeer people who live there are only one of the minority populations within Mongolia. This woman is a shaman, and people come from all over the world to meet her and learn from her. These people use reindeer for food, 
milk, hides, and transportation, but their way of life is threatened by deforestation. But there's, uh, this is just one side of Mongolia. The other side is modern, tech savvy, and striving to keep up with the rest of the world. Some say that in the next 20 years, Mongolia will be one of the richest countries in the world due to their extensive mineral deposits, especially copper and gold. But there's a long way to go. Infrastructure, especially the roads, need a lot of work. This is a road leading to our house in Ulaanbaatar, and when my 11-year-old recently saw it, she didn't recognize it at first, though we lived there for seven years. When I reminded her, she said, well, you forget after you live here for a while. It changes you. I don't want to forget everything that I learned through our extended Peace Corps experience, but I, I don't mind the rosy picture that remains after moving back to Minnesota. Our children gained more from living overseas than we could ever have wished for, but we're also part of this country. We embrace being American. In fact, we did everything that we could while living in Mongolia <laughs> to celebrate American holidays. Here we are one Halloween, and let me tell you, for people who have never seen children, much less adults, get dressed up in costume, this was an exercise in cultural sharing. <laughs> the scarecrow frightened more than one Mongolian coming down our hallway at night. But our best costumes were these, which we borrowed from the local photo studio. Mongolians asked my husband, who's that Mongolian woman with you? They didn't recognize me. I guess I'd gone native. This was taken in 2004, and little did I know it would be seven years before we came back to Cass Lake. But we finally came back last summer with a store of memories to last a lifetime.